Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, race number nine at the Big A on Saturday. Gotham Saturday is the grade three Tom Fool Handicap All Our Stakes previews on DRF TV presented by DRF Bets. Sign up for a new DRF Bets account, access $150 sign up bonus at drf.com forward slash join promo code TV. 150. Let's take a look at this field of older sprinters. They're going six furlongs at Aqueduct on Saturday. Your morning line favorite, Mike, is the number three. That is great stuff. Great stuff. Got just a wonderful pace set up last time out in the toboggan. There was a ton of hitting early. Great stuff hung up at the back <laughs> of the pack and came with a big rally to win it. Do you think six is a little short? He should get a fair pace. It won't be supersonic. Look at a fair pace in yeah. the Tom Fool. Do you like him better at that seven than this six? Yeah, maybe I like him a little bit better at six or, or at seven or eight furlongs than I do at six. But it's not like this horse can't run his race at six furlongs. He certainly can. I don't uh, envy David for having to make the morning line for this race. I would have no idea who to make the favorite. Um, and I get it. You know, great stuff coming off a 102 buyer in a grade uh, in a graded stakes race. Yeah, sure, you know, he could be the morning line favorite here. Um, it's just one of those situations where so much went right for him last time to pick up that big win that it's hard to take him, you know, right back at a short price. But can he win this race? He absolutely can win this race. The six do share also got a really nice setup last time out in the Gravesend when he beat four of these common rivals. He kind of sat in mid-pack. There was a good pace coming on, and he was able to outfinish them on the far outside. Yeah. Yeah, he likes six. Where you have a question mark about the other horse, this horse really likes six. He really likes Acroft. He's won his last three uh, starts on dirt. He's trained by the, the great Linda Rice. Right. This horse is going to take money in here. What's the knock? I, I don't have one on him. This is a horse who I'm definitely using in this race. He's six for eight on dirt since Linda claimed him. He finished second in the other two races. I mean, all he does is show up and run. He's not... You know, he's not that flashy and he's not that fast. I mean, you know, you sort of look at him and it's mostly, you know, mid 90 buyers. That's the best that he can do. But he runs every time he can get any kind of a trip in a race and he always finishes. At the end of all of his races, he is still running at the end. I think he's really dangerous in here. Time form US. Let's take a look at that pace projector for this race. They've got two horses out there on the lead. It's the speedy number one yeah. Green Grotto. Bred in New Jersey, 1.1 million in the bank. He's a graded stakes winner, uh, going seven furlongs, of course, winner of the Carter. He's going to turn back to six. That's no problem for him. No. But favorite tail might be a problem, and yeah. father time might be a problem. Green Grotto's getting up there at age eight. Yeah, he is getting up there, and it does feel like his form might have tailed off a little bit. You, know, you have to go all the way back to the Carter last April to get the last win for this horse. And a lot of the races in between um, haven't been, you know, the real good Green Grotto, who can be really good at times. I will say... His toboggan might be a little underrated. That was a really fast That's pace. Right. He went and he hooked Tockaful early. And it's not like, you know, Tockaful just buried this horse and went on with it. This horse would not let Tockaful get away until the very late stages of that race. Favorite tail is the number nine. He is expected to pressure Green Grotto for the early lead, if not outright set it. He is no spring chicken himself. He is seven <laughs> years old, and we're coming upon three years since he ran third in the Breeders' Cup sprint at Keeneland. A winner two back at Laurel. It was nice to see that there's still something left in the tank. Yeah. What happened last time out in the fire plug? He finished just behind something awesome, a horse that came back to win the graded General George with a 98 buyer. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's not like his uh, fire plug was terrible, but it wasn't great either. I didn't see a big excuse for him in that race. Um, you know, it was nice to see him get a win two starts back, but I didn't think he did anything special in that race either, which was a race that had, you know, no closing going on. That was the race where you wanted great stuff out of that race. You didn't want this horse. You know, I don't know. He's got the, the races from 2015, if you want to go back that far and say, you know, he's really, really uh, uh, tough and dangerous in this race. I just don't really like his races since the layoff. Chad Brown has the 4-3-5 India, beaten favorite in the Gravesend, beaten at 5-2 to two in the Fall Highway, beaten at 3-1 to one in the Phoenix. He's starting to frustrate me a little bit. Yeah, Chad's putting blinkers on, hoping that maybe it wakes this horse up. How did you look at the Gravesend? Yes, it was a fast pace and he was relatively close, but also you could say he was sitting behind dueling leaders. He had a yeah. shot out of it. I was disappointed he couldn't hold second. I agree. I mean, I just felt like it was more of the same for this horse um, where he ran fine. There's nothing wrong with the race that he ran, but all in all, I thought things worked out pretty well for him. He had a shot at it. He couldn't find enough when it counted, and I just feel like you can go back through most of his races and keep saying the same thing about him. It's rare when he gets there first, but he does always show up and run his race. You know, can he win the Tom Fool? He can. I, I just don't think I want to bet him.
life in shambles. I thought if it was going to happen for him, it would be in the Gravesend, where he just got a great setup and a great trip. He shot yeah. on through down towards the inside, and Duchere still was able to take his measure lay. Kind of an even performance in the toboggan. Is he just exposed in these stakes races? Yeah, I think he is. I mean, I just, I just don't think he's good enough to win races like this. But he's, you know, he's another one of those horses in this field. He just sort of shows up and runs his race every time, so you can't really discount him. Spartiatus won this race last year. Of course, it was contested over the now defunct inner dirt. He right. came off of a long layoff for new trainer Rudy Rodriguez, and he ran fine, went in for yeah. a 62-5 tag against Westwood, who's been sharp in his last couple. Uh, this, I think, might be a better field than the one he beat last year. I think it is a better uh, Tom Fool than the one he beat last year, for sure. He was in, also in really good form at that time last year, and his form sort of went the wrong way after that race. Now, they ran him in a couple of tougher spots, a couple of grade ones. He doesn't really belong in those races, but his form did tail off. Um, as far as a starting off point, his last race was fine. I mean, he got a good trip in that race. He was running at the end. Westwood, the horse that, that won that race, was a really short price. He was also stopping yeah. the last 16th of a mile, so the ground that Spartiatus made up is a little bit of an illusion in that race, but he still ran well and could take a step forward in this race. Classy class earned a 100 buyer speed figure at Aqueduct last year when able to take advantage of a nice easy pace going six and a half furlongs. Right. He's making his third start off of a long layoff for Kieran. He's blown big leads in his last two races, but yeah. maybe cutting back to six is what he wants. He finished ahead of Harlan Punch last time out. All that horse has done is come back and win with buyers of 94 and 100, and he'll be yeah. salty yet again the stymie on yeah, Saturday. Yeah, he fits really well in that race. You're right. I, I'm with you in that, you know, it's not like um, he has huge excuses for those last two races, but I just like him better going shorter. I don't like him going a mile and beyond. I like him better going shorter. So I think the turn back to six really works for this horse. Is he good enough? I personally couldn't talk myself into it, but maybe I would use him somewhere at a big price because I do think he fits well in here. There are worse 30 to 1 shots in the world than Candid Desire, who lost all chance in the safe Florida Sandy when it started to rain early in the day. Yeah. This horse does not like a wet track at all. His prior race on dry footing resulted in a 90 buyer. The problem is that's the kind of horse he is, and yeah. you might need to run closer to a 96, 97 to win. Right. I mean, I love him as a horse. I don't like him in these kinds of races. I just don't think he's a, a true graded stakes kind of horse. That he may not even be like a true stakes kind of horse. I think he's something uh, a cup below that. If he catches a big pace, he will run at the end, but I just think this is too tough for him. There are those nine, and then there's our top pick, the number five, yeah. Skyler's Scramjet, a perfect three for three at six furlongs for Michelle Nevin. Kind of a workmanlike win last time out uh, over a muddy track. And I don't really think he loved that muddy track. Mm -hmm. It looked like he was getting outpaced a little bit on the turn, and then he was just the best horse, and he was able to grind yeah. down the leader. On fast going, two starts back, he popped a big buyer from just off of the pace, and I think that's the trip he gets here. Yeah, all those things are probably true. And it's just, he just feels like that one horse that you could just feel like is still heading the yeah. right way. You know, everybody else in this race is exposed. You know what they are. You know what they're going to do. Maybe Skyler Scramjack could take one more step forward. If he can run the race that he ran two back, obviously he's a contender anyway. Um, I thought his last start was a little underrated. His buyer, you know, dropped nine points in there. I actually thought he ran really well. He got into a little bit of traffic, and Dylan Davis had to sort of rate him, him a little rail, bit. Yeah. You know, that horse that he ran down, Angry Moon, he's no superstar, but he's been known to pull off an upset or two when he gets loose on the lead, and he was loose on the lead in that race. This horse came and got him in the stretch. Nine to two on the morning line for Skyler's Scramjet. Fair? Yeah, I think it is fair. I think he fits with these horses. Five, six, two, three for Mike. Five, four, three, six for me in the grade three. Tom Fool Handicap. Again, if you're playing this Aqueduct Saturday card from home, you know what to do. DRF bets. Go to drf.com forward slash join. Type in the promo code TV150. Receive a $150 sign up bonus and start betting today. Approximate post time for the Tom Fool, 512 Eastern at the Big A on Saturday. Good luck.